Hello guys, welcome to The Train Parrot. We lost the four hour time frame. We need to sit down and talk about this, discuss about what could be possibly the next low for Bitcoin, what levels we need to hold. And if Bitcoin was to do a continuation to the upside, what do we need from Bitcoin as a signal to tell us that that liquidity sitting immediately above us is also going to be taken and we're going to continue going up. Guys, if this is the type of content that you like to watch, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch this video until the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. Those two things are really helping the channel to continue growing. Let's make the four hour time frame the star of the show. You can see that yesterday around 2 p.m. UK time, we lost the four hour. And since then, we made a lot of 59 on the RFI and we seem to be challenging this yellow line for a potential small, tiny bullish breakout because we are below the major support for the four hour, which started on the 5th of July. So this could well be just a push for a retest and further continuation. That is the highest likely scenario for the four hour. Let's say we make it to an RSI of 50 and our resistance is currently located around 70 approximately. So we can look in the price, where are those two levels? But also this move to the downside could turn into a fake out. That is way less likely than the continuation here to a level of around 50. And that could look something like this, making not necessarily a new high, but still breaking above this line that currently holds their resistance. So we need to do two things. We need to look what price corresponds to 70, to understand the lowest likely scenario of continuation right now on the four hour and the highest likely scenario of potentially finding the resistance at the price and then next looking for what's going to be that low. So let's say that resistance is at 70, that will require that the price needs to reach 66.36 eight and that relative to this high is a higher high which will confirm that we have high likelihood of continuing towards the next CPR pivot located at 70.4k. If we saw any resistance around here to challenge this order block that we are seeing at those levels, then it's very likely that the price will fall to that RSI of 50 that we mentioned earlier. So let's put that 50 in and let's see what could be the next level of support. That is currently located at 63.3. This is just a speculative number of 50. We could well go beyond that. We can see that we have fair value gaps here to be filled. The closest to the price right now is at 61.8. But also we have this massive gap that we left in the weekend on CME futures. And on the one hour, we are forming this triangle that many times when it breaks up this sort of triangles on Bitcoin ends up being just a liquidity grab to continue going lower. So very careful here where you place your stop loss if you are counting on this breakout on the one hour to continue up. I still haven't discarded the option of filling the gap. The part where I'm still unsure is whether we're going to fill the full gap or just partially fill it. On the daily, the RSI looks pretty healthy to me. After these massive moves to the upside, we have lost a little bit of steam, but none of the retracements of the RSI have been any significant. For example, compare this move here of only four points, whereas these candles were moving moves of about 11 points. So relative to that, the daily RSI looks very strong. And I think if we were to find a low on the daily, possibly we are gonna find it somewhere next to the dotted yellow line at RSI of 53, maybe if we get really bearish at 50. So between 50 and 53, we are still in the bullish retest. Below 50, we re-enter within this structure, which was the bearish times for Bitcoin. We do not want to be doing that. In a bull market, you can still recover from that, but that determines how quickly we recover. So let's look for the daily, an area between 50 and 53 for a retest, which we say that's still safe for the RSI to bounce. First, let's look for 53. 53 is currently located at 62.6. Let's change it to 50, which is the last line in the send before we re-enter 
the structure turning into bearish on the daily, that is located at 61.6, currently pointing up. If this happened in three days in the future, that might find the line at 62. Make sure that you're following me on Twitter because I tend to publish updates multiple times during the day about how things are progressing. So here is the last line in the sand. Unfortunately, 61.6 still above the CME gap. Somewhere around here, it will take partially the CME gap, as you can see there, but the largest chunk will stay untouched. If we were to break from this triangle structure to the downside, and as you can see, I told you this breakout is coming back inside the triangle, so maybe by the time you're watching this video, nothing guaranteed, it's just a matter of probabilities. I got a new lecture from the Big Well Explorer, and as you can see, this peak now is higher than the one we had during this retracement, meaning that there's quite a lot of additional deposits going into the exchanges. I get so many comments on Twitter everywhere about people saying, I disagree with you when there are deposits. That could mean that some whales are putting their Bitcoin as collateral in the exchange to trade long positions with leverage. I agree that's something that some wells do, but I still think that the vast majority of the deposits tend to be for wells and large holders that are looking for a target price to sell. As we mentioned yesterday, the battle against the bull market support band continues. So far, we have conquered the 21 weekly, EMA, but not the MA. I feel like we are in nowhere's land here just because we are halfway through in the megaphone pattern. This is why I call yesterday's video the breaking point, because at this point is where we could very quickly approach the top of the megaphone pattern and start seeing a full market recover and then very quickly new all-time highs and you're just sitting on your cash. Or this could be one rejection that takes us to a new low at the next low of the megaphone pattern, which is located at 51K. And I hope that number rings any bells because we've been talking about that number for months. It's not guaranteed, but it could be a consequence of failing this ongoing battle against the bull market support band. The markets yesterday looked a little bit spooky for a lot of people. We've been talking about the Nasdaq having lost momentum since late June. And even when we made this touch here at the top of the trend line, I still was talking about a loss in the momentum. We managed to find this peak. We have an engulfing red candle. Right after that, we are having some very dodgy moves here, leaving gaps to the upside, looking as dumpy as previous areas like this, like this, like that. So let's see how much of a retracement we can get from the Nasdaq. There seems to be an ongoing rotation into the Russell, which represents most of the low cap. But yesterday, even the Russell closed in the red and the VIX started pushing above the 200 moving average. If it holds about here, you should expect big volatility. Typically, that big volatility comes also with bearish moves. My bots had a big impact at this point. So when you break above that level is the time when you start needing to look into your bots for potential exit or your longs. I'm not telling you to sell anything. I'm not a financial advisor. But if we were to break above these levels of volatility, typically that comes with a little bit of extra fear in the market. Google has been putting multiple days in the red. Apple also seems to be looking a bit toppy together with a high sell and finally has lost momentum on the RSI. Nvidia lost momentum on the 20th of June and since then it's been putting lower lows. So the structure of the RSI is looking quite weak. Nothing major yet. This could turn just like this in another push to the upside. You can see here also how we lost the momentum, but we barely move at 20% and then we have another move of 90% to the upside. That is the behavior of a blow of top, a bubble about to pop, parabolic move, scary retracements, followed by massive new pushes to the upside, but that is just a ticking bomb. No one is gonna convince me that Nvidia is just gonna go parabolic 
endlessly because nothing does. Amazon is also taking a breather here, testing support at 188. Tesla, after the breakout, still looking healthy in terms of the price. We can have a look at the RSI and it's still looking healthy, in my opinion. Nothing broken yet. And when it comes to the point of break, we are still very close, but nothing decisive. We stay one or two points away from the cross of all the most important trend lines of this full bull market when it comes to the RSI weekly. If anything changes on this, you know the drill. Find my account on Twitter and give it a follow. Trading Parrot is the handle. That line in the sand for a breakout bullish or for a retest and rejection is located at 67.1. And I really, really, really want to pay a look at trading different to see where is the liquidity around the 67. We need to know what is the incentive for the wells to take that liquidity and do something about it. So here is trading different chart. And as you can see, we have some mild liquidity relative to what we have at the very top and at the very bottom. Of course, 51 and above 72, there's no doubt about it. That has the big, massive pack of liquidity that wells have been salivating for months. But in here, we have some blue liquidity and you can see the numbers on the very top 9,000, 8,000, 5,000 on each of these levels compared to the reds that have 24,000, 31,000, 14,000 from 3x, 5x, 10x. One thing that could play out based on my experience because I know how Bitcoin plays tricky games and I'm not telling you precisely that this is going to happen but don't get tricked and don't discard these scenarios when you think what comes next. Imagine the price went on a rally in the next two days maybe possibly towards the weekend, all the way up to take all this liquidity, okay? And then comes back and closes on Sunday around here. How would that look in terms of the weekly RSI? The weekly RSI uses the closing price. It only cares about the price after the end of Sunday. That will make the RSI weekly go above this, call for a breakout, grab liquidity from here, and then retrace to the same price, meaning that at the end of Sunday, we are still here. So we do not have a bullish breakout. That is one possibility. My point being, for the full breakout to stay bullish, we need to take this liquidity and the price needs to still hold above 67K. Because if it comes back below 67K, then the weekly RSI will have retraced below the dotted line and you do not have a bullish breakout for the upcoming weeks. Instead, you have just a rejection from resistance. And guys, if you want to use trading different, there's a link in the description with an offer that ends in two days on the 20th. There's a 20% off only if you use the link in the description for trading different. And we have run out of fair value gaps on the upside and we took some from the downside at 63. So we can remove this one here. That one is gone. So if we were to go to the downside, the next incentive is at 62.3 towards 61.3. To the upside, we have 70.6. So the price now really needs to make a decision. Where is the next price located? The price is always looking for liquidity. If there's not any incentive to stay there, it's going to have to pick 70K or 61. The price always goes for the liquidity. And now on the 30 day, we are packed with liquidity on the downside. Bar charts is showing some support at 63.5. That is just some mild support. If we highlight it a little bit more, that pops a little bit more clear. But we also have resistance at 67. And the same goes with the live order book. There is almost no levels compared to what we were seeing a few days ago where there were clouds of liquidity at support and resistance. We have gone back into nothing is going on really. Even the level supporting 60 has been pulled out. The resistance at 67 has become really mild. And I'm going to have to drag this to see something. But really, there is not much. 
you can see that the Delta is affecting mostly the longs at the moment. It's got accumulated 569. That's pretty significant. And I think there's quite a high likelihood that we take this first. But looking at where are the liquidations, there's, there's massive amount of liquidations here at the top as well. And I think that's because the Delta is calculated from the 14th of July, meaning that from that day, there's been loads of longs, but in this chart, we are looking at the monthly and on the monthly, we have loads of liquidity on the upside. It's all relative to the time frame that you're measuring. Today, there was almost 0.7% of the peg on USDT. I like to keep an eye on this. I typically send myself alerts to know what's going on with the depegging of USDT. You can see that in the past, there has been a lot more significant and a lot more scary. And I wanna give an update on Leverage Squeeze. I've been posting on Twitter the signals. We have loads of cells here, meaning that the longs are risking massively a long squeeze. Then we have a signal number two. This is very similar to what we saw around the 1st of July that made a move of almost 17% to the downside. But you can see as well that not every signal ends up in profit. This made 7%, but this one went up 8 In here, this one made 20%. So we got one win, two wins, one loss. One win, this is a consequence of the 2 billion in open interest that has been spiking and the ratio of longs versus shorts. I show you the delta on high block capital, how we have over 500k in delta. Now looking at the full bull market, you can see how rare is this signal. We only have a similar situation once in the full bull market, which was at the end of January this year, right before we made a move of 77% to the upside. It's incredible that when there is a real pump of Bitcoin, one of those that happened less than 0.1% of the time in the whole history of Bitcoin, like this one here, right after the ETF approval, it literally continued running high regardless of the amount of longs risking liquidation. So could that be the case that we are going to experience also a push of 80% right after this? Or is the signal going to be accurate and then we're going to experience a 20% to the downside and go to 51k? I'm afraid I have to tell you that at this point, the only way I'm reading the signal is as an alert that volatility is about to come. Open interest is very high. The general markets are moving as well. Volatility is about to spike. So I think it's the time to pay attention. Guys, I'm hosting an event on Bybit for $500 position airdrop. You're going to find a link in the description to enter this event on Bybit. Use my referral link to join Bybit and claim up to 30,000 in rewards. And remember that in order to have access to all my indicators, which is a collection of over a hundred of them, you can have a look at my website where I have different tiers of subscriptions, not just with indicators, also with signals and per selection for bot trading. And if you connect your user ID of Bybit with my Discord server, you can claim 70% discount on any of those tiers. If you already have a Bybit account, you can transfer your referral using the instructions I left on Discord. You can use Bybit pretty much from anywhere in the world if you get a digital residence card. I left you a link to a video I made a while ago with instructions, and there's a nice discount if you use my referral as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.